of vein damage. I wish that's all it was, because at least then we might be more hope of recovery. The truth is much worse than that, and it didn't just happen to Trudy. Trudy came to me the morning after a one night stand. She hadn't intended it to happen like that. She trusted the wrong man again, thinking it would lead to more. Sarah, I've made a mistake, she said, close to tears, as I opened the front door and let her in. I tried to coax her out of her self-depreciation. Nothing seemed to help. I just don't know what's wrong with me, she said. There's nothing wrong with you, it's him. He's a giant jerk face, I said for lack of a better insult. What about that guy you like at work? Bob, wasn't it? Robin, fresh tears streamed down her face. He doesn't like me. How do you even know that? He talks to you all the time. Yeah, but he looks at other women. You look at other men. Only because he never looks at me like that. I want you to grab her by the shoulders and shake her and make her understand that she couldn't expect this man to know how she felt when she was going on dates with other men. It didn't make a difference that she was doing it to try to rid herself of her feelings for Robin. How was he meant to know that? Trudy just shook her head and said, I'm going to do it. I didn't need to ask what she was going to do. I already had enough friends who had paid to undergo the new treatment. You can't. Aren't you worried about brain damage? Samantha and Prudence have been in the treatment five times between the two of them. They're completely fine, she said. That was debatable. They weren't exactly the poster women for normal, even before the treatment. <laughs> Trudy's mind was made up, though. Looking back, maybe I should have tried harder to dissuade her, the, dissuade her. But I was only trying to play the role of the supportive friend. I was there the day she went for her first treatment. I was there when she decided her feelings were rubbing too much. She booked herself in for a second treatment. I put my foot down the third time when she wanted to forget her horrific day. Nothing serious had happened, just Trudy's hurt pride and a lot of, admittedly, understandable embarrassment. No, you have to learn to deal with these things like a normal person, I said. Her response was that that was what normal people did in this day and age. I really couldn't argue with that. If normality was decided by the majority of people, what, what the majority of people were doing, then the treatment was normal. That meant I was the abnormal one. It sounds great to never feel any negative emotions or be haunted by those memories you would rather forget. It was soon being used on violent criminals to make them forget their tendencies to rape and murdering. That also sounds great. But as with most things in life, when used or overused by the wrong people, they can be a bad thing. I broke myself out of my trip down memory lane and looked through the tiny crack in the boarded up window. I've been hiding in this house for a few days now. I'm almost out of supplies. I'm no good to anyone if I slowly starve to death or dehydrate. I'm going to have to wait till nightfall so there's less chance of being seen. The doctors will still be out there looking for people like me. But if I go outside in the daylight, they'll spot me more easily. Night finally arrives and my stomach is rumbling. I tap on it as so that could silence the noise it's making. The last thing I need is to be betrayed by my gut. I open the door slowly, eyeing the bushes as though something might jump out at me. When it doesn't, my gaze falls to the road. There's a few cars, maybe abandoned, but any one of them could be occupied. I look in the opposite direction. That side of the street is empty, so I walk slowly and aimlessly in that direction. I could run, but if I'm spotted, there's a chance I could fool the doctors or anyone else into thinking I'm one of the empty people. I stop when I hear a voice coming from the garden. I'm already cursing myself for stopping. The empty people wouldn't have stopped. They would have carried on walking. Should I carry on walking and hope my mistake wasn't spotted? Or should I go and investigate and just hope nobody is around to see me? I decide that if anyone is around, they've already spotted my abnormal behaviour. I may as well try to find out what the noise is. I walk purposely towards the garden, no longer having a reason to keep up the pretense of I've already been seen. Hello? Why did I just say that? I know I'm already standing out like a sore thumb here, but why make the situation worse? 
If I were ever to have a treatment, it would be to remove the act of idiocy from my brain. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. A timid voice pleads with me as his owner steps out from some shrubs. 